Hi, I'm Mandy Pryor and welcome to Spotlight on Pittsburgh. Spotlight on Pittsburgh is a program about Pittsburgh's most fascinating people and what they do to make our city an amazing place to live and work. When we come back, I'll introduce you to Patricia John, who will be here to represent the PA Tourette Syndrome Alliance. Later in this program, we'll bring on three impassioned ladies to speak of a brand new nonprofit, Bridges 365. Hi, and welcome back to Spotlight on Pittsburgh. Hello, Patricia. How are you today? Good, Mandy. How are you? Good. So this is your second time here on Spotlight on yes, Pittsburgh, but for yes, a completely different cause, if you will. Um, so today you are here to tell me a little bit about the PA Tourette's Syndrome Alliance. I am. PA Tourette's Syndrome Alliance is a nonprofit organization that helps provide acceptance, assistance, education and support for people with Tourette syndrome both in their communities in their schools and for their families if they need it and so what made you you're a board member I am a board member um, I believe you're treasurer as well yes I so am. you have a full plate there you're very involved what made you decide to work with this alliance? Tourette syndrome alliance well I have a daughter and a grandson that have Tourette syndrome and Tourette syndrome is a very um, misunderstood disorder, if you will, and a lot of people who are diagnosed with Tourette syndrome don't talk about it, don't know how to deal with it. There's not a lot of information in the community about Tourette syndrome, so therefore when they need support, it's very difficult to get. And um, back when my daughter was diagnosed with Tourette syndrome many years ago, there was nowhere to turn. So when we discovered Tourette Syndrome Alliance, it became a lifeblood, a lifeline for us, if you will. And what the services we, Tourette Syndrome Alliance provides families ha is so helpful for so many people. We provide family camps and um, it's a place where people, families, children with Tourette Syndrome can go, feel acceptance and support. We have education and we also advocate for people in the community. We go into schools and educate teachers. We educate other students about Tourette syndrome and about what each individual is dealing with and going through and how we can be helpful as a community. So, excuse me. So you know that, um, you know, what people think they know about Tourette syndrome and what it really is are usually two very different things. So it's, it's nice that we can help provide that education. And can you share with us a little bit? Because I mean, it is, I don't wanna say on the rare side, I'm not sure statistically how many people are in, uh, well, affected by it? So the statistics change a lot because probably more people have Tourette syndrome than have been diagnosed. There were there was a whole generation of people who may have had Tourette syndrome that were never diagnosed. Sometimes people don't recognize the symptoms. So Tourette syndrome is diagnosed by having motor, motor and vocal tics for a period of 12 months. And now a vocal tick is not necessarily words, but it can be throat clearing or sniffing. And it's diagnosed before the age of 18, anyway, for a period of 12 months. And um, you'll see a lot of people, young people who've been diagnosed with Tourette syndrome who have, um, their parents have taken them to allergists, to other doctors because they are sniffing or their throat clearing. And a lot of times it can start with a tick that's in the face area and eye blinking, uh, as I said, a sniffing, a throat clearing, and it doesn't go away and it doesn't go away. And, and the parents have tried antihistamines and then they, they find- They think there's something else going on. They think on there's something the else going system, on. Right, allergies, right. that makes sense. And so that, anything that might make a noise is considered a vocal tick. And then you might see a shrugging or a, um, a wincing or some other kind of movement that a person with Tourette syndrome will have. And Tourette syndrome is also an umbrella disorder. So there's other comorbid disorders that go with it. 
ADHD, um, OCD, and things like that can also be part of Tourette's syndrome. So, so they there are get intertwined sometimes. Absolutely, absolutely. So people who are diagnosed with Tourette's syndrome very often don't know where to turn for more information, and or how to best deal with their symptoms or the things that come along with it. And that's where we come in and that's where we provide the help that a lot of people well, need. Well, and I think this is important for you to come on here and tell me about because the way it's portrayed in movies or that people think of it is a completely different way than just something right. as little as clearing your throat or sniffing. So, right. And it can be much bigger. And you know, interestingly, recently, there have been a lot of celebrities who've come out and, and said they had Tourette's syndrome because it is a disorder that sadly people keep hidden because there's been a stigma associated with it in the past and we're hoping to change that. It is not something that you create. It is, you know, we're hoping to change that. And recently there's there's been, you know, a Grammy Award winner who's come out and talked about her Tourette syndrome, uh, soccer players, actors, and a lot of celebrities. Which absolutely so that helps. helps to spread the knowledge that it's out there and that people aren't alone and that maybe even let somebody know if you do say that sometimes it's misdiagnosed um, that yes oh. to be aware it's great yeah, it's, it's awareness great. absolutely um, and so tell me a little bit more about your roles in schools and what you do kind of in the field work that you do so in schools we can go into a school and educate both teachers and the students about Tourette syndrome Perhaps there's a student in the school who has um, a motor tick that, that is very obvious and or some behaviors that are very obvious. We do presentations such as assemblies where we show films and we talk about what Tourette's syndrome is and how it affects people. We also educate teachers because not surprisingly there are a lot of teachers who have not uh, been exposed to an education about Tourette's syndrome. Absolutely. And, and in fact, there's a, a, I've heard of a lot of people in the medical field who don't really know about or understand it. So we do provide that even in um, all of those places. Well, and you don't think of uh, you going into a school as a teacher and then there's so many different things right. that kids can be diagnosed with. and. They didn't learn that part in college that's or student right. teaching. It's <laughs> constantly evolving. It's different students each year. So that's great that you go in there and kind of support yes. them. And, and if someone asks us to, to do that, you know, we've gone into some schools where there are students that have um, Tourette's and they've asked us, can you come in and talk to the students? And in it, oftentimes it's very freeing for the student that has Tourette's syndrome, but it's also really helpful for the other kids. I've had students come to me and say, wow, I didn't know, thanks for telling me about that. I had a, um, a teenager come up to me and say, I, I have to talk to my mom. I think my little brother has Tourette's syndrome uh, after we gave them the sheet of what some of the symptoms are. So that's really, you know, that's really been helpful. And then with the other things that we provide, we do have someone sometimes at Children's at the Tourette Clinic the student, or uh, I'm sorry, the camps that we provide for families are very, very beneficial in so many ways. And it helps people to meet others in their community. And that's important too. It right? is. I mean, when you find somebody else right. with something, you don't feel kind of out and alone out there on that that's exactly platform. right. Especially with how bullying is. A lot mm -hmm. of the bullying is because there's, you, you aren't aware and they just don't know how to deal with that's it. That's right, that's and right. And so yeah. this can kind of help at least for that like that's right support them more absolutely absolutely so um, what do you think is the best way for somebody who doesn't know much about Tourette's to learn more or if somebody wants to get involved in it well we always are looking for volunteers or support but if someone is interested in learning more about Tourette's syndrome whether they think they have it or they want to support someone they know who does they can go to PA T-S-A-I-N-C dot org. It's patsainc dot org. Or they can call, and I have to look at it, 1-800-990-3300. And whoever takes your call will help you, direct you to someone within your community. We are a statewide organization. We have a very large presence here in the southwestern Pennsylvania area. 
And also, I know that you do different events and fundraisers to help keep the organization going, to help grow it and grow the awareness within the community. So do you have anything coming up? We don't have anything planned yet. We did recently have an event at Mad Max and Robinson. We are planning some events, but nothing that I can give you uh, in stone yet, but you'll be one of the first people to know, I promise. Thank you, <laughs> and you can donate direct, of course, Absolutely. to the Absolutely, absolutely. Well, thank you so much, Patricia. I will have you back on here in just a little bit. We're gonna meet the Bridges 365 girls in a moment, women, I should say. Yeah. Um, so thank you so much. Thank you, Mandy. To find out more about the P.A. Tourette's Syndrome Alliance, go to patsainc.org. We'll see you back after the break. Hello and welcome back to Spotlight on Pittsburgh. I have three guests on the couch today. This is the first time that I have filled up the couch with people passionate about what they do. So let's start with the introductions. We're going to start here with Rebecca. We're going to move our way down. We're going to talk about Bridges 365. We're going to have fun with it. And we're going to talk about literacy, right? Yes. Right? Okay, go ahead, Rebecca. So I am Rebecca, the president of Bridges 365. And this is, our mission is, um, I'm sorry, building bridges to literacy and self-worth. So I've spent a lot of time studying why people sometimes make the choices they make. You know, we're all born into whatever family we have, but why do some kids go on to do great things and other kids keep repeating patterns that they know aren't healthy? Sure. And a lot of it comes down to literacy, um, which was really interesting because that's something that you think every kid is getting. But ultimately, what you're getting at school clearly isn't enough. So there's been a lot of reports about um, books in the home actually create this pathway, and it's the subconscious need, con subconscious need to have books, and that really changes your outlook on school and learning new things. And the statistics are crazy. I would recommend anyone look them up. But books in the home create this path to literacy and it helps them with jobs, it helps them get more money, which usually helps people along the way to making better choices. But it's a whole thing that c helps the community because you're making better choices with your health care. You can read your options, you can make choices that if you're illiterate, you really don't know what you're looking at. You can get better interest rates on loans, you can just understand the whole world around you. So. We're just making an effort to put books in homes because if you can't afford food or heat, you're probably not buying a book and That's they're not true. cheap. <laughs> no, they're not. Um, I know that I have an almost four-year-old and we read at least three books. He wants to read five a night. <laughs> so we're constantly trying to refresh his library, but once they're kind of hooked on it, it's a big difference. It is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm fortunate. I know that my kids have books everywhere and I grew up in a home where my t my grandmother was a teacher so we always yeah. had new material but to look at families who don't own a single book in their home um, you know it's just not a priority if you're struggling so it perpetuates the cycle of because you need food you need clothing yeah. you need shelter so books kind of come in but if you're maybe. struggling with all those things and you do have a book there's importance on it yeah. And it builds this whole lifelong, <coughs> books were important, somehow we always had them available. So we're trying to build this bridge and make it more affordable and accessible to families all over Pittsburgh and bridge the gap of there's a serious need. Now was there something behind the Bridges 365 name because we are considered the city of Bridges? <laughs> was that something that it you was? Liked? I think that played into yeah. it for yeah, sure. It was. Yeah, yeah, we we um, we talked a lot about the actual bridges and the sister bridges and how they all start from different locations but end up on the same path, and that was kind of our way. I of thought maybe like one of you lived on one side of the bridge, <laughs> the other on the other. Oh, yeah. uh, I think we all grew up things. on different <laughs> sides of the bridges, but <laughs> yeah, the the bridges was that was our tie-in was you know the the sister bridges in Pittsburgh, um, they they. Um, 
all start in different areas but end up in the on the same street, the same path. So that's what we're hoping to yeah. to you know encourage here is no matter where you come from, you can end up successful. That's wonderful. And so do you want to tell me a little bit more about uh, what you're doing in the, in the community to make this happen? Yeah, so um, we have um, a couple things that are going on currently. Um, I'm actually going to defer that to Lindsay. Um, oh. <laughs> <laughs> she can speak a little bit more about um, our little free library initiative yeah. and, and what we're doing currently with we're, that. We're really excited about it. Um, we were actually uh, lucky enough during our initial kickoff event to have one of my friends, her name is uh, Trisha. She owns Trish Lee Designs, and she and her husband built a free little library for us. Little free library. I always mix them up. I always little mix them up free myself. library. Yes, little yes. Free <laughs> um, LFL. So, um, so Trish built this really cute little library that um, is still looking for a home. We're hoping to probably put it at Genesis of Pittsburgh, which is another. Um, charity that we work closely with. Um, it would be a perfect location for, for there because it's um, their, their goal is to help um, mothers and, and children that need, need a place to go and need support and need help. So it would be perfect to have books there for moms to have to read to their children. So, um, so that's what we're hoping to do with our first official little library. Um, we're also working closely with Keystone Oaks High School. Um, they're building us lots of libraries. <laughs> That's wonderful. Um, yes. So that not only <laughs> helps the kids, you know, with their creative minds to, you know, actually build these things and put their hard work, you know, into play, but um, the outcome is they're going to help us donate the libraries to pediatricians' offices or um, parks around the, the area or um, locations where um, daycares, daycares, <coughs> low income, low income daycares, or um, places where English isn't a first language. Um, that's one of the places that we want to target where the the community isn't necessarily speaking English as their first language. So. Um, we would love to incorporate books, ESL books, you know. Different and Yeah. yeah. Um, and we, our first order of business um, for the next few months is to just encourage everyone to go through your home, find some old books, and take them to the little libraries that you see all around your community already. Um, that's... We're, we're constantly collecting books, which is <laughs> wonderful, and we would love to keep taking them from you, but our homes are now equipped. they need a home <laughs> right <laughs> our homes aren't the best place for them right now we are waiting for the rest of the libraries to be built and so we're encouraging everyone to find well, a I little hope library. somebody out there who's watching has a storage unit that they could lend <laughs> for just a little bit. Right, right. Um, I mean, my, <laughs> gra my yeah. grandma is one of the, you know, she donates constantly. She loves giving us books. Some of them are really funny. Um, but it's to the point where I'm like trying to find Stepping a place for them. them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we that's we would love for everybody to if you want to help, it's the easiest way right now. And it doesn't cost you a thing. You're literally just taking books from your home that you have read or don't want anymore and giving them to somebody that could use them. So. Well, my background, my my grandmother was an English teacher, my father was an English major, I was an English major, books have always been a huge part of my life, and I actually put up a, a little free library uh, yep. on the Montour Trail a few years back, which yep. replenishes itself often and almost has too many books just yep. running itself, and it, people are running and walking past it. It's, right. it's not next to homes or anything. So yeah, it's awesome. It's like people are constantly taking it and shuffling, so I think yeah. that's wonderful, especially the locations and the focus on the kids. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's gonna make a big difference yeah. We're hoping to, area. I believe, um, one of the, one or a few of the libraries will be used as food pantries yeah. uh, at a local organization called SHIM. It's South Hills Interfaith Movement um, Mission, Movement. Ministry. Ministry. None of those. <laughs> <laughs> Don't listen to me. I apologize. <laughs> anyway. Well, <up> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But they have very small locations. They're actually working out of garages that were donated because they didn't have space. Mm -hmm. So they're very small libraries, but it's pretty cool that they'll be able to put our right. very small little libraries out there. Yeah. yeah. That's wonderful. And be multi-purpose. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Well, that's great. Is there anything else that you guys have coming up that people can learn more? Where could they learn more? What can they do to help? Um, so, so that's kind of my talking point today is just to mention that if you feel aligned with our mission um, and you know want to do more to help, obviously we're looking for, for books and all of that. But um, we're also looking to build our team. We have two vacancies, um, the first being treasurer. Um, while we you know manage we are all business owners small business owners and so we know how to manage money and, and do the budget um, we are looking for someone to kind of volunteer their time and help us with bookkeeping and budgeting um, we all really have um, great plans and vision for the nonprofit um, but we're really looking for someone to help us stay on track with the finances and that's make sure a, that we plan for the future. Role. Yeah, it's I mean, as a nonprofit organization, obviously we're all volunteers, we're not taking a paycheck, but money and finances, budgeting does come into play because we have to sustain and build right. um, and grow. So we are looking for a treasurer. So if you have any interest with that, please. Um, oh, you don't want me to do it. <laughs> <laughs> that's the general the creative you. side. <laughs> The general you to the public, <laughs> um, anyone out there who's interested. And then we are also looking for someone to help us with marketing, um, being that we all run businesses and have families. Um, so often, I think the promotion side of what we do kind of gets um, lost by the wayside. Lost by the wayside, and um, we all have a dis, you know different voice when it comes to social media. So we are looking for someone um, to help with marketing, and again, they would help with social media, um, email marketing, and you know possibly come along to events or things like this and take some behind the scenes footage um, and pictures. Uh, it's funny because that's what I do, that's my business is branding, but um, again, we all have our unique skill set. So sitting here today as vice president, we're all, or I'm kind of pulled in a different direction. But um, those are our two vacancies. So again, if you find yourself aligned with our mission and are looking for a volunteer opportunity, um, we would love to hear from you. And this could be someone um, in college, so a college student, um, graduate school, Somebody looking to build yeah, a resume. Someone to looking to build a portfolio. Or help um, kids. Or just, you know, want to feel good about helping the community. Yeah. <laughs> Wonderful. Well, I'm going to bring you guys, well, you're going to stay here. I think, Lindsay, you're out of here. Well, See you I later. I messed up the shim thing. I know. I understand. <laughs> we had to pick somebody <laughs> and we drew straws back there. You're out. <laughs> and then we're going to bring uh, Patricia back out from the PA Tourette's Alliance, Syndrome Alliance, so you guys can chat a little bit more about nonprofits and Maybe you get some good but ideas from one another. <laughs> I'll leave that up to her. <laughs> all right. Well, thank you very much, and we'll be back just in a moment. Um, I can't wait to see all these, all that these three women will do to help those in need with Bridges 365. We'll be back with Patricia and our Bridges 365 crew after the break. <laughs> Thank you for coming back to Spotlight on Pittsburgh. We have a full couch again, but we got rid of Lindsay. She's out of here for now. Um, no, I'm just kidding. We love Lindsay. Uh, so Patty is, she works with Heffron Tillotson and, and she is a treasurer. I, I know her, she's a full plate, but maybe she can give you some ideas on, on the best ways to get a treasurer, or find out a little bit more about what you guys are doing and see what you can do together. Mandy loves to throw these things at me while I'm, <laughs> and, and I just want to clarify, I work for Heffron Tillotson as a financial advisor. I am the treasurer of P.A. Tourette Syndrome yes, Alliance. Yes, I'm sorry. <laughs> yes. I just needed to clarify <laughs> that. I think one of the best ways is to find somebody who's interested in uh, finances in some way, but also interested in your organization. And uh, LinkedIn, I think, is a great way to find someone. There's a lot of young people, and you mentioned young people, who are looking for some place to do something charitable, mm -hmm. something fulfilling, but yet hone their skills in that area. So LinkedIn's a great place okay. to okay. look for someone. 
And so did you know everything about uh, Tourette's syndrome and all of the different things that she had talked about? And, or is that something new to you? No, I mean, I would say it was new. I, I didn't know all of the information that you were sharing. Um, and I didn't know that there was an organization out there that would help people that with that diagnosis. So it's, it's interesting now, you know, I've been a small business owner for a couple years. And then now within the last year working with the nonprofit. And I think I'm learning a lot about the different organizations and nonprofits. I mean, everything is so specialized and yeah. niche now. I think that is really important. Um, obviously in the business world, but also in the nonprofit world as well. Right. Yeah, I thought it was interesting to learn some of this. I knew I had known about the ticks, but I guess I always thought it kind of went along with the verbal side. So. Yeah. So and that's what a lot of people think they, that there's a lot of misconceptions. So, and I think too, uh, you mentioned literacy that can also tie in with so many other diagnoses because um, some of the, or you know, one of those comorbid disorder with Tourette's syndrome can be an inability to um, write, it's called dysgraphia, mm -hmm. and it's some of the other disorders can cause kids, or people, I say kids a lot, but anyone, to have some learning disabilities as well. So I, I think literacy mm -hmm. is profoundly important in every in every way with you know helping people that have certain disorders and just the general population so it was nice to hear and it's nice i think that we've partnered with a pediatrician they were pretty excited that we could get different types of books out there mm -hmm. to make sure kids understand that maybe they're not different mm -hmm. so i think they had a big push toward you know books about kids with differences so that's nice that's, that's good wonderful. we'll try that's to good. get more maybe more literacy out there about Tourette's yeah. and... Yeah, I have to see if there are any childhood books about that. I, I'm betting there is, but I don't mm -hmm. know off there's the top of my head. There's probably some very, very small library. Yeah. There, there's some few, uh, there's a <coughs> few uh, authors, there's a series of books for teenagers right now that I know someone off camera can tell me what the title of it is because I can't think of it. And, um, but there's a series. Well, if you get the information, share it. We'll share it okay. out on our spotlight on Pittsburgh page. The author has Tourette's syndrome and the main character has Tourette's syndrome too. Mm -hmm. Cool. That's nice. Yeah. It's very relatable. Yeah. Well, thank you all so much for coming on today. Hopefully we give a little more awareness to your causes and to help the kids out there who need help. Uh, I will be happy to share all of your information out and the video will come out here on Peters Township Community TV soon. Thank you for joining us today on Spotlight on Pittsburgh. Also, please follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Spotlight on Pittsburgh and join us again next time when we shine the spotlight on two new guests.